Welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. Today, I spoke with Julian Salinas, the founder and CEO of NLP Cloud, about what it's like being an entrepreneur while being a parent. I love this topic, even though I don't have kids, because both identities are important. But how does one reconcile in their mind having both hats at the same time? Does being a parent make you a better entrepreneur? Does being an entrepreneur make you a better parent? Did having a kid make you more ambitious? And does growing your business give you more or less time with your kids? How do you plan your day? What's the best time to start a business in the life cycle of your child? Can kids understand what you're doing and can they give you the space that you need in order to do it? How do you handle managing your kids' lives when everybody is at home at the same time? What are the best things and worst things about having kids while being an entrepreneur? I really appreciate how honest Julian was about his situation, and I could feel from our conversation how much he loves his family and his business, and that they absolutely affected the other, sometimes positively and sometimes negatively. But I took away from this episode that while it's hard to be both, it's not impossible, and it might just make you a better human being. But I'll leave that up to you to decide. And now, I give you Julian Salinas. <laughs> Welcome to We Live to Build. My name is Sean Weisbrot, and I'm an entrepreneur, investor, and advisor based in Asia for over 12 years. Join us every week to fast track your personal growth so you can meet the ever increasing demands of the company or companies you are passionately building. Time waits for no one, so let's get started now. We're talking about being an entrepreneur and a parent at the same time. So thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I'm not a parent. I don't have any kids. I think a lot of people listening may be in the same boat as me, um, or maybe there's people who are entrepreneurs but don't have kids yet, or they have kids but aren't an entrepreneur yet. So I think we'll have all sorts of people listening. Uh, so hopefully we can hit it from different kinds of angles. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Shen. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's going to be great to talk about this. I think it's not necessarily so common to have feedbacks from entrepreneurs talking about their family life. So if I can give my two cents here, maybe it's going to be useful to others. Well, I hope so as well. So before we go any further, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about what it is you do and a little about your family? Yeah, sure. I started working on it one year ago, but I launched it officially four months ago in, Jan in January. It's a um, natural language processing cloud for inference in the cloud. So basically, when companies were want to perform NLP easily uh, in production without the, the hassle, they can do it on my cloud. And uh, we are provisioning, uh, we are giving a lot of pre-trained models and also the possibility for data scientists or developers to upload their own natural language processing models. So it's great. It's been working pretty well uh, since the launch. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Initially, I was a developer and I, and I used to use NLP myself uh, as a user in several projects. And I realized that using NLP in production was still pretty hard, which is why I, I decided to launch this, um, this startup. So basically, Doing this with two kids uh, is kind of a challenge. I have two boys. Uh, one is four years old and a half, and the second one is two years old. I won't lie. I think it's much harder uh, launching a project like this with kids, at least with young kids. I don't know how it is with older kids, but with two young kids like this, it's kind of hard because you, of course, you, you want to spend your whole time on your project and uh, every time you have to take care of the kids. If you're not prepared to this mentally, it's a frustration. So you have to, to think about it and you have to find some tricks. And then in the end, it can also become a, a, an opportunity. But at first, when you're not prepared, it's frustrating. Maybe, yeah, maybe it can be interesting if I talk about my little uh, hints about how I'm managing it, uh, because I also think that it's definitely an opportunity for entrepreneurs to be able to balance family life, launch a business at the same time. It's totally possible. I think 
I am, I'm a good uh, proof of this, but uh, it takes some tricks. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that stuff in a little bit. The first thing that comes to my mind is some people feel like having kids changes them, gives them a sense of clarity and purpose and a larger mission. Did you feel that way? And is that why you started your company? Because uh, your oldest son is four and a half and this company you started a year-ish, year and a half ago. So your kid was already a few years old when you started the process. Actually, it's interesting. It must be true. I think that having kids uh, actually pushes me to developing a business because I think in the end, I want to be more independent and not to worry about uh, making money anymore because I want to spend most of my time with the kids and in the garden and uh, stuff like this, you know, and doing other stuffs. And so I think that yeah, momentarily I'm trying to work harder, uh, launch a business and try to make a kind of a, an automatic way of making money so that in the end for the next five or 10 years, I have more time for my kids. And how did you get the idea to do this kind of a business or what kind of a goal did you have that set you on the path to make this business? You said wanting to have something that was automated and wanting to have time with your kids, but obviously you're not going to launch a business on day one and have it be automated, making money and you have time with your kids. So uh, what was that process like? And do you feel like you've gotten to a point where you now have some more time to spend with your kids? Or do you find that having this business and it's growing gives you less time with your kids? Yeah, for the moment, it definitely gives me less time for my kids, but it's still a fairly new project. So uh, I, I don't expect it to be like this forever. The way I launched this business actually initially was a side project. So um, when I started working on this, I didn't think that I would uh, launch it for uh, 100% by myself and uh, do this for the kids and so on. It's, I started working on this and after a couple of months, I realized that it could be maybe pretty serious because I started uh, understanding the market better. And when I realized that there was a market for this and that the solution could be really useful to many people and that there was money to make gradually, it got more serious. And then that's when I started thinking about maybe doing it 100% and then uh, thinking that in a couple of years, uh, it could be a good way to make a living without maybe working too much. But for the moment, I'm working more than I used to maybe one year or two years ago. So how do you plan your day? Is it around your work or around your kids? Definitely around my kids because I'm taking them to school in the morning, taking them back in the evening. So I am constrained in the day. I cannot start working too early in the morning and cannot stop too late. I can then work again once they go to bed. But then there is another issue. Personally, I need to sleep quite a lot. And if I start working too much in, in the night, then my productivity is dropping. So it's not a good idea. So basically, I have a limited time frame during the day when I can work, I can do whatever I want, but I have to be very productive and very smart and efficient in the way I'm doing things. So does your wife work too, or does she take care of the kids at home while you're working on your company? How does, is she a positive influence or a negative influence or like how, what is her relationship in all this? My wife is working too, and she's working quite a lot. Uh, and actually, she's not working from home. She, she has to commute to work. So actually, uh, it's not very convenient for her to take care of the kids. So the deal was that because we are living pretty far from the city she's working in, that I'm working remotely. So I am taking care of the you know uh, school in the morning and in the evening. And then she takes care of the dinner. And then if I need to work more, maybe in the weekend or stuff like this, I can take some time to work more and uh, kind of compensate. Since the start, she's been very supportive, but she won't sacrifice her career for me, understandably. Yeah, I think that's something new in millennial women. I've found in the last few years that women in their like early to late 20s and even some in their early 30s have this opinion now that they can't rely on a man. They have to be independent in every way. And they would even sacrifice having a family in order to maintain their career if they had to. And maybe this is a thing in Asia that's like a revolution almost that's going on culturally. But it's quite fascinating to see that because my, my ex was the same way. She was like, I'm 24. I'm starting out my career. I don't want kids, at least not yet. Sure, you've got your own thing going on and you're doing quite well, but like I want my thing too. Her family gave her problems for that because they wanted her to, you know, like have kids. And she's like, I want my own career. 
No. So that was a huge problem. In a way, it's harder. But the flip side also is that when your wife is working and making money, you have less pressure on yourself to be you know, profitable and make money. And in a way, okay, maybe you have less time for your project, but uh, you are more relaxed because if you're not making money uh, with your startup, startup for maybe one year, two years, three years, if your wife is supportive and says no problem, then there is still money for the family, which is pretty good actually, I think. So it depends. Some people create a business to solve a problem or to have a different lifestyle. Why did you start your business? It was definitely to solve a problem that I experienced by myself as a developer. It's been a long time that I wanted to launch a business by myself. It's not the first one I'm, I'm launching. The first one was not very successful. So I knew I wanted to do it again uh, at some point. Uh, it was not urgent. I was not in a hurry, you know. I was just waiting, taking time to find something cool. And I thought this time it was the, the right moment. Uh, you know, I had energy, time, a good topic with NLP, the trend, you know, in the market, everybody say, is saying that uh, it's booming. And so I thought it was the right moment. I think the, the main motivation at the time was uh, showing myself that I, I'm able to launch something successful, you know, and then make money out of it. <laughs> at least you're honest about it. That was kind of one of the reasons why I started my business was I had done a lot of different things in different industries and I wanted a challenge. I wanted to challenge myself in a way I'd never been challenged before. And the only thing I hadn't done was started a startup. So I said, all right, I'm going to start a startup. And and wow, it's a lot harder than I thought. So it's a good challenge so far. Do you think it would have been better to start before you had your first kid? Or maybe now that you have kids and you're doing it, do you feel like it would have been better to wait until they were older to start? How do you feel in that regard? No, I definitely think it's the best moment. Maybe not the best, but it's an amazing time to, to start the project. Two, one year or two years ago, it would have been too early. When the kids are like six months or one year old, I think it's maybe it's a bit harder. I don't know. I have no regret. I think it's a perfect time for this, especially because also we recently moved to a new house. We have more room. So it's much more you know convenient to take care of the family and then work at the same time because if I need to work and can, I can go to my own desk. I don't think it will be easier five years from now. And I don't know, I, I had this uh, this idea, you know, right now and um, launching the same project in five years from now, I'm pretty sure that someone else would do the same. So it's now or never. <laughs> do your kids ever ask you what you do? Do they know what you do? Do you think they comprehend like the concept of what you're doing? No, not really. Not really. They see me on my on my computer every day. They see me typing typing code. They try to do the same on the keyboard, and uh, and then it's a mess. <laughs> but uh, no, they don't understand. For the moment, the only thing they understand about the PC and internet is that we can download movies and cartoons, and uh, that's where the cartoons are coming from. So they kind of like it, but uh, that's pretty much it. Do they understand that when you're working, they need to leave you alone or do they not care and they just run in and want to see you? And or How do you handle that if you do at all? They understand, but it's taking some time and uh, it took a lot of uh, disputes <laughs> because, yeah, basically when the kids see you work, when they see you here, they don't really understand why you, you have to be isolated like this and why you can't just be with them. So yeah, now it's, it's getting better, especially the four-year-old four year old boy uh, now understands that when I need to work, he needs to leave me alone. But the, the second one is still a bit too young. It's hard sometimes to, to get him to understand. So yeah, it's kind of a, a tricky problem when you're working from home with the kids. But I think that a lot of people had this problem uh, this last year with the lockdown, working remotely from home with the kids around, kind of a challenge in that regard. I kind of encountered that with my ex because uh, she was working in an office and she wasn't fired, but she wasn't allowed to work from home. So there was like a month or two where she was just at home with nothing to do. And here I am trying to work, you know, like a kid almost. She would like come to the door and she'd open the door and she'd look inside at me and she'd be like, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm working. Like, that's why the door is closed. And, uh, you know, I'd be like, you know, don't you have anything to fill your time with? And she would get annoyed when I would say that. But like, go figure out how to use your day. Like, you've got all this time. Like, if I was 24 and I didn't have work that I could do, like, I would be reading, I would be learning stuff, but she couldn't control herself. But I know, I know it's different from children, but she's almost like, like a kid in that in that specific regard. Totally agree. Actually, uh, I've been working remotely for maybe six or seven years myself, 100% remote. 
it's always been a problem. People, I mean, around you, when they see you at home, they have a hard time understanding that you're working. They don't take it seriously. And and so even for my wife, my when my parents are visiting, when people are at home around, they know I'm at home uh, all the time and, and uh, it's hard for them to understand that I'm working and doing something serious. Just wanted to say something maybe, uh, Sean, also about the COVID. I realized that it was very hard, not only for me, but for many, many parents, actually. In, in a way, it was very unfair because actually when you have kids with the lockdown, you need to take more time uh, at home with the kids and you are much less productive for your work. And on the contrary, your colleagues are also locked down at home without kids and they have nothing to do. So they are working much more. And so the gap between yourself and your colleagues without kids is like uh, widening a lot. And so after a month for the boss, uh, when they see that you are much less productive than your colleagues, the beginning is understanding. But then after weeks and months, uh, is less and less understanding. And in a way, it's, uh, it, it's pretty hard for, for parents you know, to be competitive in that way. Yeah, I definitely can understand that my COO has a six-month-old daughter. And every time we're on the phone, she's pretty much just screaming at the top of her lungs. And so he can't really get much done when she's making noise. So he sometimes he has to go to the balcony and talk on the phone, you know, when he's at the balcony, but then he can't be at his computer. So he can't do what he needs to do because he's talking to me. And so, yeah, kids are, from what I can see, a, a huge distraction. Now, I'm sure that they're great in their own ways, but uh, I'm glad I don't have kids yet. So what's the best thing about having kids while being an entrepreneur? I think the best thing is that kids force you to stop working and then look at the big picture. Actually, I'm a, I'm a great fan of the Pomodoro method. Basically, it's a way of working. You work for 20 minutes and every 20 minutes you stop for five minutes. There is a timer. It forces yourself to stop for five minutes and then you start again for 20 minutes and so on and so forth. It's kind of weird. But the idea is that uh, you, you need to sometimes force yourself to stop and do something else. So you rest a little, you stop looking, you stop watching the screen. The great thing about this is that in your mind, you keep working, actually. Even if you're not on the computer, you keep thinking about what you were doing. But uh, while walking, you know, or uh, drinking a coffee, or I don't know. And then when you go back to your PC, you sometimes you realize that you were, you were not doing things the right way. It was not the right direction. You adapt. And it's very powerful in that regard, at least for myself. And with the kids, it's, it's the same. I mean, at the end of the day, I could definitely keep working and working on the screen on my PC again and again and for the whole night and for weeks. And I never want to stop, you know, especially as a developer. It's very tricky. You never want to stop coding. But you have to stop because at some point your productivity is dropping, but you don't really realize it. And you need to stop. And when you stop, especially as an entrepreneur and not only as a developer, you stop coding, you stop working, you stop doing your promotion on the internet, you stop you stop writing content and stuff like this. And then when you start again, you adapt. And you and that's when I'm taking the best decisions actually. And when the kids force me to stop at night, uh, sometimes earlier than I want, I'm playing with them, I'm taking care of them, I'm eating with them. But in my mind, I keep thinking about my startup. When I start working again, I have great new ideas, great new strategies. And so yeah, not being Technically working and typing on your computer doesn't mean that you are not uh, working. I'll play devil's advocate here. Wouldn't your family, particularly your wife, hate to hear you say that knowing that you're not totally present, you're not totally with them, you're thinking about something else? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sometimes it's okay. I mean, when you, you finish your day, uh, you did great stuff and you feel that uh, it's okay now you're free and uh, you will start again the next day but you can totally you are you have a free mind but sometimes no it's not the case sometimes you are in the middle of something you have tough questions complex questions in your mind and then of course uh, during the dinner keep thinking about this so yeah you 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 talk to people uh, you talk to your wife and your kids uh, but uh, your mind sometimes is not 100% present but it's still better than not being here at all, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a good trade-off. I find that sometimes I think I'm done with work for the night, but then I'll wake up at two or three in the morning and I've got all of these design things floating around my brain going, oh, but like I need to change this and change that. And it's like in my head, I'm messing around with Figma, right? The design system. I just want to sleep. I just want to stop. But this happens to my COO as well. He'll, he'll call me like, 
in the morning and he'd be like, oh my God, I didn't sleep last night because I was thinking about operational structuring and automation and, and like why Google Cloud isn't working last yet, you know, yesterday. Maybe it's not something we do consciously, but it's just like our brain is stuck on this thing and it's not going to change focus until you just deal with it. Exactly. And same, same for me in the night. And, and uh, yeah, it's hard. That's also why sometimes it's good to stop working pretty early before going to sleep. But still, if you have a, a tough problem in your mind, a great way to, to deal with it is to write down things on a paper or on your phone or I don't know, but write down things somewhere. It really helps. Otherwise, if you don't write down things, it, it stays in your head and it's really hard to sleep. I have a to-do list I keep that I... I used to do on paper and, you know, years ago I started using a phone. So I totally understand uh, that that's a beneficial thing because if you don't write it down, as you said, your brain like keeps refreshing yourself, like it keeps reminding you of it. So you don't forget because it's that important to you. But if you write it down, then all you have to do is recall the, the overall concept the next day and then you can just refresh. But anyways, what's the worst thing about having kids while being an entrepreneur? The worst thing... It's definitely you don't have enough time for yourself. That's pretty simple, actually. So you you, you want to, to work more earlier in the morning, later at night. Uh, you want to work on weekends. You want to work all the time and you don't have this time. So sometimes you're frustrated and you are worried that your competitors are doing things faster because they don't have kids. But I don't think that that's always relevant. In my career, I realized uh, several times that the amount of time you're spending of your, on your work, especially on technical work, is absolutely not related to the quality and uh, yeah, the quality of, your, of, the, of the job you deliver in the end. If you're a good developer you can, and a good DevOps, for example, you can spend like one hour on, some, on something which is doing wisely and someone else maybe would spend three days for the same thing because you know, the guy won't start in the right direction. He doesn't have the skills. He didn't put too much thought into it. So yeah, not having enough time, I won't lie, is, is kind of a frustration sometimes. But time is not the only key uh, when you're an entrepreneur. You also have to do things right. When I launched my first startup with a friend, my main complaint about my associate was that he was working a lot, always working, 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 doing tons of things. But half of what he was doing was useless. And, and there is this belief that sometimes as an entrepreneur, you have to try tons of things, do a lot of things, because uh, maybe if you're lucky, maybe one of these things you're doing will work. I don't think it's, it's right. I think you can do things right. Sometimes, of course, you have to do trial and, 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 and error. Uh, of course, you have to pivot. But still, you can uh, do things properly, and then you can save some time and energy. Yeah, I've definitely been learning that recently. I've always believed in working smart, not hard. But I only found after having a team that I could tweak how I work to maximize their efficiency and minimize my effort. And that's been the theme for me for this year. And it will, it will probably continue to be the theme for me in 2022 as well. Do you think having two kids makes it harder than having one when running a company? I wouldn't say it's harder because the first kid, you know, there are many things you are learning. Sometimes you're worried for nothing. So you're much less worried for your second kid, but it's taking a lot of time, especially while they're young. Like now, I think when they are growing older, it's easier, but uh, maybe you are still worried for other things when they are older. I don't know. But for the moment, the most important challenge is that uh, they are taking a lot of time. And uh, every parent I'm talking to say the same thing. When they switch from one kid to two kids, it was much more time consuming than anticipated. I had this discussion with another guest that I recently published. His name is Anthony Mangaluzzo. And we talked about time management, actually. Everyone talks about work-life balance, and I think that that's bullshit. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. It's an internal balance as to how many times you can say no to somebody or something before you eventually give in and do it, and do you feel bad about it when you finally do? I'm very fascinated about how people's brains work in regards to themselves and their place in their society or their, their family. 
have you found a way to balance your needs, your wife's needs, your kids' needs, and your health and not let your business flounder? I think it's possible, you know, to do things properly. Of course, you have to make choices. And I think in that regard, I totally agree with you. When people talk about work-life balance, they don't talk about the most important things because it implies that you will have to say no to things and it implies uh, making decisions like in a business, you know, lo- your life is kind of business. It's the same thing for me. The way I'm making decisions in my business is also the ways, uh, the way I'm making decisions for my personal life. There are tons of things I would like to do. I am never bored. I cannot understand why people sometimes are getting bored. It's weird. There are tons of things I want to do and I'm only doing a fraction of it. So it's constantly about choosing to say no to things I'd love to do and maybe do it later or never, I don't know. And the most important thing for me is making money, but not necessarily too much, but uh, decent money. Have fun in my job. Launching a startup is very fun. Take care of the of the family and, and be there for them. And also, uh, I like sports, for example. So I need practice sports and uh, to go running to... I'm boxing, so I like to go boxing. I have a garden with chickens, rabbits so i have to take care of this so it's a uh, little things i i absolutely wanted to do it's not taking too much time but then of course i have tons of other temptations from people who are very interesting that i could uh, add to my life i don't have the time so it's about making choices as you said and it seems easy say, said like this but it's very very hard to make uh, the right choices and the right priorities for your personal life is there anything i haven't asked you yet that you would like me to ask, or uh, if I have asked you everything, something that you'd like to help kind of sum up the whole episode? I would say that it's not necessarily related to kids, but I think it's, it's, it's still important. It's something I, uh, I realized when launching my project. It's not necessary to quit your job while you are a developer and you launch a project. Sometimes it is, but most of the time, I think you can do great things as a side project and keep your job for a while. And this job is giving you money that you can use for your project. Once you have product market fit and when you feel it's serious, then you can think about maybe quitting your job. So if anyone wants to know more about what it's like being a parent or if they want to know more about your business, how could they keep in touch with you? So they can definitely reach me on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn uh, every day. So LinkedIn is the right place. They can also have a look at NLP Cloud if they want to. But yeah, LinkedIn is definitely the, the, right, the right place to contact me by direct message and I, I always answer. So if you like this episode, definitely follow up with Julien. And uh, don't forget that entrepreneurship is a marathon, not a sprint. So take care of yourself every day. And if you have kids, then make sure you make time for them because they grow up fast. And one day, all you'll have is regret that you focus too much time on your business and not enough on the ones who love you. Thank you.